welcome to High Impact Living, the motivational speaking of Rick McDaniel, the noted author, international communicator, and senior pastor at Richmond Community Church in Richmond, Virginia. We all think we have time until we don't. I'm sure when Kobe Bryant got into helicopter for the hundredth and who knows how many time, go to his daughter's basketball game. I'm sure he thought it'd just be another day. I'm sure when he went to church before he got on the helicopter, he never thought that'd be the last time he'd be in church. Last time he'd pray and worship to God. Been talking about time, the value of time, investing time, how to manage time, the seasons of time. And now we come to the end of this series, the culmination of time. We're going to read one verse in the Bible today. It's not a long verse. Sure says a lot. Take out our information guides, this purple note sheet, and follow along with me. And if you're watching or listening today, just watch on the screen. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. We die only once, and then we are judged. We die only once, and then we are judged. One life. When you hear the word legacy, many people are like, oh, whoa, that's too big a word for me. I'm just an average, regular person. I don't have a legacy. You do have a legacy. We all, we all have a legacy. Your legacy needs to be considered. When you depart this earth, what will you have left behind? It's a good thing to consider. It's even better to consider it now so you might do something about it. Seeing yourself as the person you can become, that's what today's about. We can't do a thing about the past. The tears that will be cried today are not tears of regret over what's happened in the past. They're tears of realization, of recognition, of repentance. What can we do now going forward that will be different, that will be better, that will sync up with God's plan for our lives? We die only once, and then we're judged. actually two judgments in the Bible. The first is the judgment about whether we enter into heaven or not. Will we go to heaven or won't we? And that is determined by whether our soul, our eternal soul that lives forever has been saved. Has your soul been saved? Your soul is saved when you accept Jesus Christ into your life, you confess your sins to him, he forgives you of your sins. You are born spiritually and your soul is forever saved that it might spend eternity with Jesus in heaven. That's the first judgment. Is your soul saved or is it not? Do you go to heaven or don't you? The second judgment is what did you do with your life? The Bible talks about five crowns, five rewards that are given. I've spoken on it before. What did you do with your life? Good question. What did you do with your life? What are you doing with your life? We're going to circle back, of course, to that, and especially to the is your soul saved part. Let's just begin here. We have to realize life is singular. Singular. One. Life is one. You die only once. 
you have. This is your one and only life. There are no repeats. Friends, listen, just in case you don't know, there is no such thing as reincarnation. You die only once and then you are judged. You're not gonna come back as, as, a, as a German shepherd. It's not gonna happen. I gotta come back as a professional athlete. This is it. The Bible teaches and the Christian faith is proclaimed always there are no second go-rounds. There are no second chances after this life is over. There's many second chances while this life is still going on. But once it's over, it's over. And then you'll be judged. Everyone will be judged. Everyone. What are you doing with your life? What are you doing? I'm surviving, Pastor Rick. No. No, there's more to life than surviving. Not that life isn't challenging and difficult, but there's more to it than that. What are you doing with your life? What is your legacy? What is the legacy that you are building for your life? You only go around one time. Years ago, I was reading about the Japanese space probe. It was sent into a two-year mission to Venus. It, want, it was there to monitor the volcanic activity on Venus, to provide data on the thick cloud that covers their climate, and to determine whether or not Venus ever has lightning. Guess what happened? It failed to enter into the orbit and flew past Venus. It got there two years. It got all the way there, and then it failed to enter into orbit. This is what the Japanese said about it. Unfortunately, it did not attain orbit, but it appears to be functioning, and we may be able to try again. When it passes by Venus, Six years from now. Six years. Whoops. You don't want to miss stuff, friends. You don't want to miss stuff. Maybe you'll get another crack at it six years later. Maybe you'll never get another crack at it. I want to say again very clearly, this is not about regretting the past. There's nothing you can do about the past. This is not about going back now in your mind and saying, I wish I'd done this, I wish I'd done that, if only, if only. Those things are of no benefit or value. But what is of great benefit and value is what you do from today. You have full control over it. Full control. You were wise and smart enough to show up at this church today or to join in online or to listen to the High Impact Living broadcast Whatever it is that you're hearing or receiving this message, you were smart enough to do that. Now be smart enough to do something with this message. Just ask yourself, are you happy? If you're not happy, what is impacting your happiness? Do you have regrets? Yes. Will you have regrets? Will you keep doing what you're doing and continue to have regrets or will something be different? Listen to what Mark Twain, many great lines from Mark Twain. Here's one. Even if you're on the right track, you'll get run over if you just sit there. So maybe you're on the right track, but you're not going anywhere. You're not doing anything with it. You know what to do but you're allowing yourself to be just overwhelmed with the minutia and the busyness of life. I was at the gym yesterday, this gal that I see all the time, I don't, I don't even know her, but she's very fit, but now she's got the, the, the bump, and I said, hey, congratulations. She said, thank you. I said, it's your first. She said, no, I have one other child already. 
I said, how long did you keep working out? She said, last time I worked out all the way up to having the baby. I said, wow, it's impressive. She said, how about you? I said, I've never been pregnant. <laughs> she said, you have any kids? I said, yeah, I got two boys. How old are they? They're not babies. My boys are raised. They're gone. I just got a picture yesterday of my grandson. Pretty cute kid. Takes after his grandfather. I can't do anything about... I raised my kids. Whatever I did wrong, it did wrong. Whatever I did right, it did right. It's done. It's over. I got that. But I got a lot I could pass on to that little guy. You die only once, then you're judged. You only go around once. I think a beer company pushed that message one time, of all the people to push that message. Good old alcohol. All the good it's done for the world. I just read recently that people are drinking more alcohol than ever before. Some of you know this, some of you don't. I'm not big, not big on alcohol, Pastor Rick does not imbibe. Why? You sit where I've sat for a number of years and you see all the bad things that have happened to people from drinking and it's not very good encouragement. I'm going to party it up. That'll be my legacy. Woo! Yeah, it's great. Life is singular, friends. What are you going to do with your life? Define your core values. Let me start there. Define your core values. How are you going to live your one and only life? What, what are your values? Your, your core values determine your decision making and your direction. What are the things that are your values? Because those values then determine your one and only life and how you decide to invest the, this precious resource of time. How you determine the, the direction that you'll go. Your values determine and really define who you are more than anything else. And if I said to you, what are your values, could, could, you, could you say them? Let me tell you my values. I value truth. I value truth. I believe that the Bible is God's truth to us, and I believe what the Bible says is true. It is universally true, and its, its principles and commands should be followed. And I, I live my life determined by those those truth statements. I value loyalty. If you're loyal to me, I will be loyal to you, and you will never have a more loyal friend. I despise disloyalty. I value effort. I, I, I value effort. I think that it is important to put forth the effort. Not everything works, not everything's a win, not everything's successful. But I believe in getting up each day and putting forth an effort. I believe that has value. I believe in excellence. I believe honors, excellence honors God and inspires people, and I, I just live my life believing that. I believe in toughness. Got an article coming out, maybe, maybe even today, on mental toughness. I believe in mental toughness. I believe in physical toughness as well. Doesn't mean everybody has to, but I do. I certainly believe in mental toughness. I believe that all of us face adversity, and mentally tough people deal with it, and they overcome it. I believe in commitment. I value commitment. I think commitment. It's incredible what it can do in a person's life. Successful people, all of you for 
those of you who've heard me before and know all these, successful people are just ordinary people who make commitments others are unwilling to make. I believe when you make commitments and you honor those commitments, things happen in your one and only life. And I believe all those values, for me, determine how I make my decisions and the direction I go with my life. Relationships that I have, the things I aspire to and pursue. And I believe those will lead to a, a, a good legacy. Maybe a great legacy. We'll see. What are your values? We have six core values in our church. If you don't know what your values are, that's a good place to start. I read this just this week. I mean, just amazing how God works. This is a pastor, Andy Stanley in Atlanta. Surround yourself with people who share your values, not just your interests. Mm, that is good. Surround yourself with people who share your values, not just your interests. Too many people are surrounded by people who share their interests, but not necessarily their values. Now, certainly, they're not mutually exclusive. You can be around people who share your interests and, and also share your values. It's very possible. But it's also possible to get around a group of people that you share interests with, but not values. And as I've said many times, 1 Corinthians 15, 55, bad company corrupts good character. And if you're around the wrong people, they're going to mess up your life. And as I've said many times before, I wish the Bible said something different, like good company positively influences people. It doesn't say that. And I didn't write the Bible. The Bible says bad company corrupts good character. You get around the wrong crowd, it's not that you're going to positively influence them for the good, they're going to negatively influence you for the bad. One life, you die only once, and then you're judged. What is your legacy going to be when you're done with the value and the investment and the management of time? What does it become? Where does it all go? You have to decide. You have to decide what you want. You decide what you want for your life. What do you want? Here's where a lot of people start with all the excuses for what they don't have. Stop that stuff. We all, all, all can sit down right now and list out the things we don't have and why we didn't get this and this break and this didn't happen to us and why this and that is an exercise in frustration and futility. It leads you nowhere. It leads you nowhere except unhappiness. Pursuing your dreams is the only way to ensure a lasting legacy for your life. You have to pursue it. You have to go after it. You decide what you want for your life. Not me, you. You decide. Listen to this Helen Keller quote. Life is either a daring adventure or it is nothing. I believe that. I believe that life is an adventure. I believe the entire book in the Bible called the Book of Acts, or technically full name, the Acts of the Apostles, is nothing but 28 chapters of an incredible adventure of how the church started and how it expanded and how it grew. It's fascinating to read. I raised my two sons, came back to bite me a bit, to seek out adventure. And then they went all over the country and world. <laughs> But I can't really blame them because I've done the same thing. Someone was saying to me recently, why do you go to all these places, Pastor Rick? You seem like you go, why don't you wait till you're retired to do it? Well, I know that that's a common path that people take. The hike that I was just on 
earlier this month is a hike you could never do in your 70s when you're retired. You would just have to go, but that would be nice to do. I'm not up for that. I was at Mars Hill in Athens, Greece. Mars Hill, where Paul preaches famous sermon to all the philosophers. And there was an elderly couple with me on that trip. They could not go to the top of Mars Hill. They could not get up there. They were not physically able to do it. it that burdened me. Like, you're, you got all the way to Athens. You traveled this far. Now you're right there. Let's go up on this rock and see what Paul did up there. Can't do it. You'll have to decide for yourself. Everybody's different. Me? I'm not waiting. I am not waiting. I will take life by the throat. I will not accept. I will define. I will determine. I will decide. That's how I'm going to live my life. You have to decide how you want to live yours. You decide what you want. What is it in your life that needs to be different? When are we going to get done with the constant whining and the moaning and the complaining? Remember the complaint thing I did a few months back? I got a phone call, actually an email and a phone call. Somebody said, hey, could you come and bring that message to my company? <laughs> the biggest group of complainers I've ever met in my life. Like, come here and speak to them and just tell them the same stuff you said to your church. These people are right. So easy to complain. What do you want? What needs to be different for you? I need a million dollars, Pastor Rick. Yeah, okay. Hey, people have gone and made a million dollars. Happens. Why can't it happen for you? It's the difference. What do you want to change? Bad habits? Yeah, well, when is that going to happen? Well, it was going to keep continuing until I showed up here today. Yeah, God was loving and kind to you and directed you this way. Enough of this, like, enough. This is not helping your life. It is not blessing your life. It is doing nothing positive for your life. It has to go. Today's the day you say, I'm done with it. I'm not going to keep doing this anymore. Your job? You happy with it? No. What are you going to do about it? Stay miserable. We can get so comfortable, you know, just like, oh, I got to make a living and this is the way it goes, so... Then somebody today, like today, you know, like me, shows up and says, um, you, uh, you die only once and then you're judged. And you might want to think about your life and what you're doing. You could go on and on into other areas of your life. L listen to what one guy did. His name is Chris Cheney. He literally gave up his commission as an officer. Now, I got a son who has that commission, so I know what that's like. He took a big pay cut. Oh, yeah, and he volunteered to compete, not even get it, compete as an enlisted man to become one of the 1,200 Green Berets that the Army mints every year. More than two-thirds of the candidates will wash out in that year-long training. Gave up, higher pay, start all over again as an enlisted man and go through a year-long training of which two-thirds don't even make it. Why'd he do it? Here's what he said. I don't want to be 80 on my deathbed wondering what if. So he said, I'm going for it. Now, maybe when you hear that, you think, that guy's crazy. Or maybe when you hear that, you're like, oh man, that's what I got to do. I mean, not the Green Beret part, but I got to do something different than what I'm doing now with this resource of life, this time that, that only I have one life and that's all there is. Some of you know I really dislike greatly the term bucket list because it's so negative and pejorative, you know, kick the bucket. I just think it's a terrible name. So I have a, another 
name for it. I've written about this, talked about it before. A life list. So much more enhancing and positive and life-giving. Uh, what is your life list? What do you want to do? Well, I got a lot of things. I'm going to do them when I retire. No, no. You know, my mother got cancer six months after she retired. We were supposed to go to Italy. That never happened. You don't know, friends. You don't know. Bring my flowers now while I'm living. You can't wait. First time I went to Italy, part of me was loving it. Loving it. Married my son in Venice. Went to Rome. Loving it. There's another part of me. What do you want to do with your life? Commit to doing it. Commit to doing it. Nothing ever happens without commitment. Talk, 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 talk. I came up through sports, which is famous for trash talking. And I loved every minute of it. I raised two of the greatest trash talkers this area has ever known. <laughs> Coaches didn't like it so much. I liked it. I loved it, actually. One of my favorite things, it got him taken out of the game, but one of my favorite things I ever saw in my life was when my son, Wes, was playing for deep run basketball against Hermitage, and he literally broke this kid's ankles in the backcourt, in the other half of the court, dribbled to half court, got over the line to not get a 10 second call, and stopped and turned around and literally went, come on, come back, I'll break your ankles again. It was great. <laughs> Coach did not think that. I loved it. Talk, 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 talk. Talk is fun, actions are better. Actions are better. There are some things that are said on a football field, you would not believe the things that are said. There is nothing more gratifying than to have when someone tell you what they're going to do, and then when you're near the end zone, you just look at them and say, you talk, I do. You have to do it. Will you achieve what you want? I can't tell you the answer is yes. What I can guarantee you is you never will if you don't try. If you don't attempt it, if you don't give the effort, if you don't make the commitment. It will always come down to effort and then a plan and then persistence. And effort and then a plan and then persistence. And then effort and then a plan and then persistence. It will always run that same way. At some point you have to get past what is holding you back. What is holding you back? Here's the words from the song we just heard. The days are long, but the years are lightning. Wow, what a great line. The days are long, but the years are lightning. It's so true. Like you get to the end of a day, you're like, man, this day was so long. And then the next thing you know, it's Christmas. Like, what happened? Where did this year go? They're bright, and then they'll never strike again. You, you never get a repeat year. You never repeat it. it it's done, and it's over, and then it's the next year. 
So, we all think we've got the time until we don't. That's life. And it's days like today that somebody just sort of knocks on your door, or in my particular case, smacks you upside the head, whatever the metaphor is, and says, hey, wake up. This is it. You have one life. You can't just keep, like, day after day after day after day, like, you got to do something with your one and only life. This is the only one you get. And again, we die only once, and then we're judged. There's a judgment. It isn't like, oh, I'll do what I want, whatever. No, you will answer for your life. You will answer. I'm going to answer. Everyone's going to answer. There is coming a day of reckoning for every person. So it isn't just like, whatever. It's not whatever. It matters. It matters enormously. We don't remember the days, we remember the moments. It's the moments. You hear people talking about, especially millennials, and I gotta give them this one, where they're saying, I don't need to spend my money so much on acquiring stuff, I wanna spend my money on having experiences. I, I, I like that, I'm, I'm, I'm all for that, really. I, w I want the experiences. When I was up at Acadia National Park this summer, and. I got up at like, you know, four o'clock in the morning and went to Cadillac Mountain because that's the first sunrise in America. And I wanted to be there with my wife, whining about how cold she was, but it, no, I was, it was good. It's cold before the sun comes up, just newsflash, it's cold, but then the sun comes up, gets warm. I wanted to be there. I wanted to see it. A lot of other things I want to do and see, and I'm, I'm going to do them because that's, that's what life is about, I think. What do you want to do with your life? Again, your values determine it. Your values, your dreams. But someday, your life will be over. Don't spend tears, time, and money on my old breathless body. If your heart is in those flowers, bring them now. Don't wait. Don't wait another minute. The day's the day to get going. Don't spend another moment on the past. Just look forward. You're there a one and only life. And ask yourself, what's my legacy going to be? Will you close your eyes with me for a moment and just bow your heads? Please don't, don't move around. And Really, if you're watching or listening, I tell you, I just stop what you're doing right now. Just stop what you're doing and let's just pause for a moment. We'll just, we'll just wait. You, you die only once and then you're judged. Is your soul saved so you know you're going to heaven? Number one. Number two, what's, the, what's your life going like in terms of the evaluation that will be given, the ultimate evaluation of your life? You have to determine that. If your soul isn't saved, I'm going to pray a prayer right now with you. That, that's got to happen. Second prayer I want to pray is the prayer about what you're going to do from today moving forward. I want you to pray this prayer with me. The quietness of your own heart and mind if you need to and if you want to. Dear Jesus, on this day, the 23rd of February in 2020, I want to make sure when my life is over, I go to heaven. So I accept you into my life and ask you to forgive me of my sins. I thank you that you died on the cross for my sins and that I am forgiven of your sins today. 
that my soul will be saved for eternity. And Lord, I pray for every person listening to my voice as they ponder their life and their legacy and what, what will their life be? And I pray that you will help them that you will give them the strength that they need to pursue the life that you have for them. That they will commit to it and that they will go after it. And that though they can do nothing about what has happened in the past, they can certainly do everything about what happens in the future. I pray everyone has a long life. I don't know whether that will happen, but I pray for that. But however long our lives are, when we get to the end of it, we'll have lived the life we wanted to live. And when we're judged for it, we will hear those words most important for any person to hear. Well done, good and faithful servant. I pray that could be the words that everyone would hear. And I pray that in Jesus' name.